uh, let's get this on the road, shall we? All right. Hello, everyone. This is Rayman for the PS1. Um, uh, can I get a countdown? All right. So yeah, this is Rayman, a very colorful uh, 2D platformer. Um, we're starting out really slow. The only thing we can do is jump, and we can do a, a grimace as well, which I will show off later, um, because you actually stand still while doing it. So it wastes time if I try to do it now, but I will do it every time I can. So yeah, we start off with just being able to jump. Um, we will have five Batilla screens. Batilla is the fairy that will give us power-ups, one each time. Um, the first power-up she gives us is uh, the punching ability. But yeah, for now, all, um, all I'm doing is holding right and jumping at the right times. So not much yet, but there's a lot of cool tricks like that one right there. I made sure I jumped on the plum. Um, because if I don't, then the piranhas are annoying. Uh, there is a thing called fine boosting. Uh, you can do it there, but then the piranha that comes from the water will hit you. Um, so the fastest way to move there is uh, to walk on the plum. So you can uh, skip uh, hanging on that vine there. But for all the other vines I grab onto, I try to do a vine boost, which is basically just holding jump um, right before you grab it. So you jump off of it the, as quick as you can. Yeah, that was Batilla. Now we have the punching ability, and now we have to get cages. Now uh, we have to get 102 cages to actually unlock the final world. Um, you have to get these cages. You cannot go there without getting all the cages. So, so that's why we do that. Uh, you don't have to kill all the bosses. We actually skip one boss, and we're still able to uh, to go to the final world. So it doesn't track uh, the bosses you've killed. All right, here we're gonna jump as late as we can, so we jump over that hammer there. And then we get another cage. Now, I only have three out of six, and I've, I'm done with the level now. The reason for that is because uh, there is cages um, that I cannot get yet. Um, basically, I need certain power-ups to get the, uh, the other cages. Or sometimes when I skip them, it's because it's slower to pick them up now. Because like 40 minutes into the run, we will get the running ability, and it's quicker than uh, to pick them up then. So that's why I'm skipping. I'm skipping like three on this level as well. All right, so next level, uh, next screen actually, there is a boss called Bizit. It's, um, it's a cute mosquito. Um, later on, there is another boss like it with the same mechanics. I'll uh, explain it in a bit. First, we need to drop down here. All right, so he spawns at the right side of the screen. And then I'm going to try and hit him as much to the top and the middle as possible, like that. going to do that twice. The less sound he makes, the better. Now, the reason I want to hit him as much to the top and the middle as possible is because as soon as I do hit him, he moves there. So the closer he's at, at that spot, the less time he will... Um, you know, he won't make it to get there, so it's quicker. And then he comes from the left side of the screen. And then it's best to hit him, like, slightly to the right of the left of the screen. Because that's the fastest path for him to move to the top middle. Because he does move diagonally. Alright, so this is an outer scroller. Um, the only outer scroller we can actually optimize. Because at certain parts, the... Oh, I actually forgot to get a life here. Anyway, at certain points of the screen the screen will become slower and faster. And it's better to huck the left side of the screen, for example, when the screen is about to go slower, because then the screen starts moving slower later, like that. If I was at the right side of the screen there, the screen would have um, gotten slower quicker, so. All right, so here the screen starts moving faster again, so I hug the right side of the screen. And then here, one more boost. There we go. And then all the way back to the left, because the screen is going to go slower again. And then all the way back to the right. It's going to go faster again. Now, that didn't seem like that much, but it does save like five to six seconds in total. So that's pretty nice for just an optimization. Now, here we're going to move slightly back to the left and then to the right again. 
Because if I would hug the screen to the right there, I would have to wait for the screen to catch up to actually uh, hit the end sign. So that's why I waited a bit. Now we get the hanging ability. We weren't able to hang before, ha before this, but now we can. All right. On to another auto scroller in the next level. Although on the world map, you can see I can actually go to two paths right now. I can go to Bongo Hills, which is to the right, or I can get upwards to swamps, which I'm gonna do. Reason for that is because I will um, get a power up after this level, the level after this level, I will get another power up that is a requirement to get uh, further into the run. Um, and I'm basically trying to get to the running ability as fast as I can right now. So that's why I have to go this path first. Now, like three, four years ago, we used to go to Bongo Hills first. That's because we didn't know a way to uh, get all the cages on the first run through in Bongo Hills yet. Which we do uh, now. Which involves a really cool trick called speed locking. Um, which makes us able to get a cage um, earlier than uh, normal. But we'll get to that later. Yeah, right now our um, Grimace is replaced by planting seeds. We actually got a seed from Terezan is his name. Um, we got it because he uh, he had his loincloth stuck on the, on the tree. We punched it off and in return he gave us a seed that's only uh, usable on this screen. So as soon as we go to the next screen, it will go away. Right now we're just gonna spam jump to get up there fast as possible. Uh, this is this next screen is actually the hardest uh, screen of the like the first ten minutes of the game. It's pretty technical. Gonna start off by punching these guys, trying to hold right the whole time. Now we're gonna do a damage boost. But first we punch the plum to the right, then we turn to the left so we get damage boosted to the right. And now we can uh, get the cage early because the trigger to spawn this cage is uh, when we go there, where we just went. All right, that seems good. And then we do a camera optimization there. Well, sort of, by punching the plum earlier than, uh, than normal. And then we jump on it. That was a good screen. Nice. It's easy to screw up there. Now we're gonna halt, right, and jump. Because then uh, we jump the fastest possible. And then we like spam jump and left and right to get up that fine faster. Now we're gonna do a uh, punch the plum from the left side so it pushes the plum and it goes faster. And then jump on this flower. This thing I just passed is a magician. There is a lot of magicians. They give there's like bonus levels. Um, they require things though, which is the blue uh, thing you see at the right side, uh, right top of the screen. If you have 100, you get a life. And you need to give uh, a certain amount of things to go in the bonus levels. And if you complete the bonus level uh, correctly and in time, because they are timed, you get a life, but we don't use that in the speedrun. Alright, Mosquito's Nest. Let's see. Starts off slow with just riding a plum. Now there's gonna be a pretty cool trick coming up. Saves like four or five seconds. We name it Plum Skip 2.0. Uh, which is a pretty weird name, probably. Uh, there used to be this thing called Plum Skip. Uh, it's also in this screen, but we don't have to do that anymore. I'll explain it later when I'm there. Um, and then we found this trick here. And that's why it's called Plumskip 2.0. I don't know. We have weird names for uh, trick names. Alright, so I'm gonna punch this plum and then punch it again there. And then at the end, jump. So I manipulate the plum bouncing again just before reaching the water. And then I can uh, reach that uh, platform next to the hunter. What you're supposed to do is punch the plum in the water and then, you know, take it easy. Also, that enemy there, that's the only appearance in the whole game. That enemy is there. And yeah, all we have to do is punch the, the lips and then he just falls down. You can't kill it though, he will come back. Alright, so now another optimization here, it's called early cycles. Let's see if I can do it. Saves 8 seconds if done correctly. Alright, looks good. Got it, nice. 
Um, it's actually pretty easy to screw up. Um, it didn't even seem that hard, but it, trust me, it is. Um, basically, you have to jump at certain uh, points uh, for the camera to, you know, not screw up the cycles of the platforms. If I would uh, jump earlier at some points, the, the cycles would have been off. All right, there is a thing called camera optimization here. I'm going to turn left and then right as soon as uh, the screen has caught up to make this cycle right here. If I didn't do that, I wouldn't have made that cycle. All right, and a really cool trick at the end. Let's see if we can do it. Um, let's see. going to manipulate the plum here. And hopefully get the cage in a cool way. Uh, I don't know if that's going to work. All right, nice. See, now I can actually jump through here, saving, like, you know, frames. But it looks really cool. All right. Decent so far. Another auto squalor. No way to speed this one up, though. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Well, we could technically, by uh, hugging the right side of the screen, just to hit the end sign a little bit faster than if you would be in the middle of the screen. But outside of that, no optimizations here. Um, after the screen, after this screen, there is going to be another boss fight similar to the Bizet fight from earlier. Um, same mechanics. He's going to move to the top middle again as soon as we hit him. But there's some more to it this time though. Now, I like to take this part a little bit safe by jumping to the left and then on the right. And it's really easy. Now, if we find boost here too fast, you can actually go too fast for the screen and you can kill yourself by going too fast. So you need to make sure to not hug the right side of the screen just before the vine section. All right. This is just a really short screen and then we'll uh, get to the boss. All right, not bad. So yeah, just like I said, I'm gonna hit him to the top and the right. So he moves there. Now he comes from the left side. Uh, the patterns are always always the same, by the way. He comes from the right there, and now he comes from the top. So I'm gonna hit him at the top and the middle, and then all the way back to the left of the screen, because he's gonna come from there. And as soon as he uh, is above us, he will actually drop the fruit. So we want to make him drop the fruit as soon as we can, because after that he moves faster. Right, now I'm actually going to not hit him. Uh, it's going to end up saving two seconds, because the cycles are going to be different then, and he's going to stay on the screen after the, the next hit. So if I did all hits and I do the next hit, he would have went uh, on with a different uh, animation. But now, since I skipped the hit, he will stay on the screen and I can hit him, hit him again. And in, gen in, in total, that saves uh, two seconds. Lots of small optimizations in this game. And yeah, for these hits, you want to hit him around when he's here. So that's the fastest way for him to move up. A little bit closer to the right side of the screen uh, on the ones where he's uh, on the ground. And now for the last hit, it doesn't really matter uh, where I hit him. As the quicker you hit him, the better, because he just moves straight up instead of diagonally to the top in the middle. So I can hit him when he's like almost off screen still. And that's the forest onto band land. But first, another Batilla. Now, this is the power-up we wanted um, because we needed to get past Twilight Gulch, which is uh, in like three levels from now. So now we can actually punch rings, which introduces us to speed locking. What I did right there, you saw I got a lot of speed. Basically, all you do is hold up and you jump off the ring and then it locks the speed you have. So every time you are holding up or down, you lock the speed you have. So if you have a lot of speed and you hold up, you yeah, you lock that speed and you go really fast. 
And we can abuse that in uh, three levels from now, or three screens from now, rather. Also, that was a, a trick as well. Oh, this is a trick as well. Okay, thank you. Um, by fist boosting there, which is called, uh, which is only possible on slippery platforms like this, we can actually reach that platform right there without. Um, oh God! Okay. We can actually reach that platform uh, because if we would just run off, we wouldn't make it. Well, we would hang, but we want the speed right here. Yeah, I was really scared there because I. I get like a really high jump a lot of times and I wanted to not do that, but then I jump too low. So yeah, that's pretty annoying. Never happened before though. Yeah. Literally never happened before. <laughs> yep. Alright, here we're gonna do a, do a little jump. That's intended because then the, the anti-tune, which is like the little bugs, like the blue bugs, um, he wouldn't charge at you, so if I didn't jump, he would have charged at me. Here is a cool trick found by the Tassers. If you haven't checked out the Tass of this game, just do it, because it looks amazing. Basically, I'm using invincibility frames there to be able to jump through those uh, spiky balls, the blue ones. I get hit by the first spikes by running off the cloud, and then I use those invincibility frames to jump through the spikes. I will do it again uh, later into this level. Yeah! Now, this is a really cool screen as well, if I can do it perfectly. Let's see. There is this thing called a zip, where you can zip through the walls. Alright, that looks good. I have to jump on the rocket and the wall at the same time, and then that happens. As long as I hold down, I can flip through. And now, okay, perfect, sick. This is called Taz Balls. Basically, if you... <laughs> it's basically how the Taz does it. <laughs> Just not get hit at all by the balls. Like, it's a really cool strat. Um, Scrimpy, which is a taster of the game, he found out, like, the way to do it the best, so... And that was the way, like, really cool how you can drop down there. And this is another zip right here. So yeah, again, we jump on the rocket and the platform at the same time, and then we just hold down and we zip through all the way up, saving like 16 seconds. And now up next is that uh, cage we should normally not be able to get on the first playthrough, but because of speed locking, we can. Uh, all we need is one fast fist. Well, you can do it with slow fist as well, actually. And then we just hold up and we can get to the cage right here. Or, yeah, if we actually grab the ring. There we go. So this gauge would normally only be possible to get if you have the helicopter ability, which we get in the level after this. But we don't need it. And then another trick on the next screen, which uh, uses invincibility frames again. You can actually jump over these anti-tunes if you jump as late as possible. But it's really risky, and if you get hit, chances are you just fall in the pit and die, and have to do all the screen again, so... Doing a little punch there to kill them is much safer. Even in normal runs, I don't do that jump anymore. Alright, so here we're gonna jump on the on these chocolate balls and then jump over. And here's the Grim, as I was talking about uh, earlier. You should watch the Japanese version of this game and do the Grimace. It sounds really cute. All right, we're gonna get hit here and then we're gonna jump through. And then we can get to this cage really easily. And then we're gonna suicide, because it's quicker. It's quicker to go back that way. And now there is this long auto scroller with one annoying anti-tune flying towards you, because the game is evil. This game is very hard casually, this guy. Killed it. All right. Gonna try and jump on this platform as soon as I can. Oh yeah, the photographers are the checkpoints of the game, by the way. Um, just before I did the task ball strat, I uh, <laughs> I uh, made the, the, the photographer uh, take a photo of me as well for the checkpoint because I would die afterwards and it's quicker to die than to go all the way up the balls again. 
yeah. You're on to me. All right, so I have three HP. Um, I will use one more in a little bit and then another one. So yeah, there's a lot of, um, I don't know, strategically putting your health sometimes in this game. All right, if you time your punch just before uh, hitting the ground, it, you still get like max uh, distance and you can actually get that cage in a cool way. If you move more to the left, a uh, hunter spawns to the right, so we want to um, get it from as far as right as possible. Yeah. Alright, so now we have 2 HP, and now we have one more HP we can use by doing this damage boost right here. We, we turn to the left, so we get damage boosted to the right. And then there's a convenient P here in a little bit, which uh, sets us back to 5 HP. Every time you die, you have 3 HP until you grab a P again. Also, about the fists, there is actually a gold fist and a white fist. The difference between that is with a white fist and you stand still, You, unless you charge, you don't kill cages or certain enemies with one punch. If you start charging your fists, then you do as much damage as a gold fist does while standing still. So a gold fist does more damage. Or you could jump and then punch, and then you get the damage as well, regardless of having a white fist or not. Oh, I'm actually... Okay, let's see if we can do this. No, that's not going to work. Yeah. I wasn't ready for it. There's a really hard clip there. Um, it screws up a lot of runs. It saves 16 seconds. I wasn't ready for it, though. Um, it's really cool if you can get it. It's really hard. Um, clipping is already pretty hard. But uh, this one is especially harder because normally every platform, every horizontal platform that meets a diagonal platform, you can do the clip on. But on that particular point, um, you can only do it at one certain spot. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty damn hard. But yeah, I would have only tried it once anyway, so it doesn't really matter all that much. There's another clip here, though. This one is way easier. There we go. All you have to do is press uh, jump at the right time, which is like just before uh, landing on that platform. And then you just clip through. Unless you go way too fast, then you don't. There's another clip here you could do, but only worth it if you get the first clip in the first level. Oh, I screwed up trumpets. Damn. The reason for that is because if you get that first clip in the first screen, you miss out a lot of things. And uh, we want to set up our HP in a certain way. So doing that clip, if you didn't do the first clip, that would set up our HP really badly for the next levels. Because that P I got in Bongo Hills on the last screen of the previous level, that's the only P uh, you can get on the speedrun route here. So there is no P on this level here. Also here I jumped to the right without actually jumping on that platform because a cage spawns uh, when you jump to the right here. But you can make it back and still spawn the cage. Because if you jump on those small platforms, they will actually drop down and you have to wait until they respawn. So that's why we do like this, this fake jump to the right. And here if I'm fast enough I can reach that, that ball. Alright. And then if we start moving to the right here we can get a little momentum thing. Um, which is pretty cool which I got as well. There's a really hard trick here that I won't do. It saves like 2-3 seconds and it's just not worth it in a marathon. It's basically like keeping your momentum on that on those uh, little platforms. Pretty risky. Here's another fist boosts. You go way faster if you charge your fist on slippery platforms. And another one here, which makes this section really easy. And then we spawn the end sign by doing a jump to the left there. Because normally you're supposed to jump on the top platform, then the cloud spawns. And then you jump on the cloud and then you spawn the end sign. But we can just spawn the end sign like that. And then a cool little trick here, where you can just jump through, saving like 10. And then another fist boosts. And then we can, re um, we can maintain this momentum if we jump at the right times. 
All right, got it. And then we turn to the left to jump over this guy. Because if you turn, if you are turned to the right and you try jumping over that guy, it doesn't work. Also, say hi to Mr. Sex and say bye to Mr. Sex because this is normally a boss, but we're gonna skip him. The reason we can skip him is because he is on the second screen of his level, and all the cages are on the first screen. And since only the cages are important, we can just get all the cages, then die, and then use the end sign out. There is an end sign on every first screen of every level. If you're on the second screen of the level, you cannot use the end sign because it's not there anymore. But yeah, we're going to use that in the revisits as well, which is after we get the running ability. We're going to be able to get all the cages and then just um, use the end sign to get back out. It's pretty cool as well because um, if you have... Like, oh, I didn't even say that there is multiple stages. Uh, each time you grab a speed fist, it actually... Um, if you start off with a normal slow fist, there is three stages to it. Um, so, if you grab three speed fists, then you have the fastest fist and the one that uh, gets the furthest. So, if you then hit an end... Like, if you... Okay, let's start, let's start from scratch. If you enter a level with a slow fist... And you grab three speed fists in that screen and then use the end sign out. You have the fist again that you entered the level with. But if you use the, the regular, the normal end sign to the right of the screen, then you maintain the, the speed fist you got. But if you use the end sign back out, then this, the, the fist resets back to the position that you had before entering the screen. And we will actually use that later on because um, we will be doing a dead abuse. And then we will be exiting the level and going back in to get back our speed fists. This is another speed lock. It also works on damage boosts. We just hold up or down, um, jumping into this guy. And then we get a lot of speed from it. And we're going to do that again uh, right here into a really cool trick. So I overshoot this, time this, and then we go all the way here, which is pretty cool. Oh, no. Okay, saved it. Damn, that was that was really close. <laughs> oh god, that would have been really bad. Yeah, if you there is uh, the longer you press X, which is a jump button, the higher you jump. And if you do high jumps all the time, you will get hit by the hunter. So you know you don't you don't want to do that. And yeah, I did a two tap of a jump, like a too low jump. Also, here is a cool way, like we get damage boosted to the right. During the uh, invincibility frames, we hold down on the hunter and then we die instantly and we don't get that animation that you normally get, uh, saving half a second each time you hold down while dying. Found by Glecken, by the way. All right, another pretty cool fist boost strat here. Basically, there is actually two end signs on this screen, but if we drop down here, there is an end sign right here. There is another end sign all the way to the right of the screen, which is slow. We prefer this one. We just do a drop down and then get the rings. Alright. Now we're actually gonna spawn a cloud by going here, taking the P, and then this cloud is up, because there is a cage uh, up here. There is very weird triggers in this game. Little damage boost here. And then this really weird three second outer scholar for no reason in a little bit. And another damage boost here. It's risky, but there's a P right there, so pretty nicely uh, put there by the game. You can make that cloud cycle, but it doesn't really waste much time if you don't. This is all just cycles, knowing when to jump. Here we go. All right. So take a look at my HP again, by the way. I have five now. I'm going to use one right here. Another one right here to get to this section. 
now I have three left, and I'm gonna use two more, and then I'm gonna grab another P. So the the health setup is really nice here. We can use one more damage boost right at the top of here to get past this section a little bit faster, and then we're gonna use one more for this uh, trick here. This saves one second and is pretty risky, but it's pretty easy as well, so I always go for it. So now we have one HP. Now we have three HP. <laughs> Back to 2 HP. Now we're gonna get the photographer here. And now we're gonna try and uh, hit a visual cue here and get a really cool last... Ah, uh, I missed it. So I would have gotten 1 HP there because of the lava ball. And then after getting this cage, I would have died instantly on this cloud. To set me back to the photographer, which is faster. Found by Enes G Master, the stat abuse. Old school runner of this game. Alright, every time you see me doing a helicopter before uh, jumping on a cloud, it's because then after that it gives me max height. The jump after that will be max height, which is a really nice trick. Like that. Small helicopter beforehand, and then it gives me max height and it gives it, makes it really easy to jump on that. Another, yeah, risky part there is doing two damage boosts, but we got it. That's all that matters. Now we have one HP, and there is a convenient P in the next level again. So that's pretty nice. It was hard rocks. All right, remember the first few minutes I said there is a running ability coming up, 40 minutes? Well, after this level, it's finally there. First, we have to get the guitar out of this boulder. And in return, he gives us a magic potion that makes us able to uh, helicopter forever. But it only works in the first screen. Now, we can also do a trick here called speed locking on it. Let's first get the speed here. And then we turn here to get a damage boost there. Because um, hovering upwards, you need to spam X to do that, and it's really slow. So just running up there while uh, the damage boost is way faster. All right, so basically, if you um, hover to the right, there is always a few frames where you move the fastest. And if you hold up on that frame or down, you will uh, keep that momentum. So we try to do that at all times, whenever we can. We will use that later on as well to uh, skip a cycle, which uh, saves like 2-3 seconds. So here I'm going to try to do it again. There we go, got it. And then jump down. Get this gauge, and then I'm gonna try to do it one more time. After the set right here. And got it, nice. Alright, decent screen. Now we're gonna cut some ropes with our helicopter hair, which is pretty cool. Doesn't matter how fast you do it. Um, as long as you don't do it too slow, because there is water at the bottom. So if you're too slow, you will get this uh, rope will will catch up to the water and you will die. But it doesn't matter how fast you do it; the water keeps moving uh, as fast. It doesn't speed up after you've cut the ropes. And it doesn't matter how long I stay at the top either. Um, I need to wait here anyway. I can try to uh, get down faster though, like right there. The water on the visual water on the screen doesn't actually kill you. Pretty cool trick here that you can do. Also found by the Tasters. And only works when you have a slow fist. Now, because of that dead abuse in the previous level, we lost our speed fist and we then have a slow fist. And that makes us able to do this trick. So it's really nicely set up there. So if we had a fast fist there, we wouldn't be able to do that trick. And it saves a few seconds. And it looks really cool. Because the fist doesn't only do damage when you punch, also when it comes back to you. It still does damage, unless it, it, you hit a wall. If you hit a wall, the fist doesn't do any more damage uh, after it hits the wall. Alright, these are just two really long outer scholars that you cannot speed up. You can hold up, though, after doing this, these damage boosts right here. To hold up, and then the screen moves up a little bit faster. For some reason.
Also, if you die here, you need to do both out of scholars again. And you can actually skip that disappearing cloud there if you jump uh, far enough from the from the right side of the platform. All right, we're gonna punch this golem, and then he's gonna move to the left as as long as we hit him. Uh, really late, he will do that. If you have a fast fist, you need to actually pause for a second. And then he will move to the left and uh, it's going to be easy to jump over him. Because uh, killing a golem actually takes quite a long time. Also, I just lost my uh, hearing in the left ear, by the way. I can only hear through my right ear right now. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe my ear is just broken. Yeah. Maybe it's the battery. Oh, it, we're back. I don't know what you did, but thanks. <laughs> All right, pretty cool uh, trick you can do here is by fist boosting. We can actually, normally there's supposed to be a lava ball on uh, all four for the small platforms. But because we do that fist boost, we can actually uh, get enough speed and height. Oh. I lost my left ear again. <laughs> but yeah, because we get uh, a lot of speed, we can actually jump uh, over the triggers. And another one uh, right here. Oh, that was close. All right. Take a look at my HP again, by the way. I have four HP right now. I'm gonna hit the, the middle thing here. Three HP. Gonna hit it one more time. Oh yeah, you can do these extra hits, which looks harder than it is. It's really easy. All you jump, all you do is jump against it and then hold, hold X, hold jump. Now we're gonna do a latest possible punch here, and then wait a little bit there as well, because if we try to hit it too fast, then it doesn't work. And now we're gonna try and jump on the on the boulder while it's in there like that, and then jump off of it to get another hit in. Because if we're not like if we're not high enough, we cannot hit it. Like you see now, you need to be high enough. And every time you do hit it, there is a certain amount of time before you can hit it again, even if you hit it all the way at the top. All right, one more damage boost hit right there, and that's Mr. Stone. And this is the Grimace, and as soon as this fight's over and I get to the Batilla screen, the Grimace won't be usable anymore at all. Um, it will be replaced by the running ability. So right now, this is also the last Batilla. We will get the running ability and the speedrun um, can start. So now we're gonna clean up all the cages we skipped or missed. Basically just finishing all the whole left side of the world map. We're gonna start off by jumping over this end sign here. And then doing a damage boost there to make it all the way past this whole section. And then that cage, you can only get that one while jumping up with a slow fist as well. You cannot get that with a, with a fast fist. So it's another convenient uh, place to have a slow fist in. Ah, uh, that's, that's okay. I had an extra health anyway. I will get more health here. And now I'm gonna have one HP again in a little bit. Tricky jump here if you do this casually, but if you know where to jump and when to hover, it's not that hard anymore. Also, that was a was an example of punching a cage and not actually killing it for the first time because I was standing still and I want to do it while I'm in the air. Now we're gonna do a dead abuse and then hit the end sign here and then uh, going to uh, Gong Heights right here. Oh. My uh, hearing is back. I can hear again. <laughs> yeah. All right. The reason we go to Gong Heights first and not finish up the forest is because of a thing called speed storage, um, which is hard to explain. Um, 
it's easier to uh, to do it than to explain it, basically. Uh, the way speed storage works... Wait, I'll actually explain it in the next screen, because that's an autoscroller. And this screen can be a little bit technical, because it has a lot of cycles. Hovering before hitting a cloud again to get the max height. And we want to have a specific cycle here as well. Jump over this, in between there, up that, and then jump off of that. Alright. Alright, so, speed storage. You see me running on normal platforms, and every any time I have more speed than that... Oh god, that was actually close. Any speed I have more than normal run speed, um, I can actually store that. Um, by running, doing a running jump off of an event. And an event is any other platform that is not a normal platform and that you cannot hang on. Um, so clouds, for example, and those little platforms that disappear. Uh, plums as well. I will set it up at the end of the next level before I die. Because yes, it also carries over after you've died and on the world map as well. And then I will jump on a plum and run, do a run jump of the right, uh, the last few pixel because it's not perfect, pixel perfect. You have a few frames to jump, uh, and then we use the speed we originally set up. Um, it might be confusing, but I'll try to explain it more when I actually do it. So anytime I swing off of a ring or um, jump off a slippery platform. That gives me more speed than normal run speed. I can set up. Also, this trick is pretty damn hard. Let's see if we can get it. Damn. All right, second try. I I'm okay with that. It's basically a route change. Um, we used to do a different route, but this one is uh, for me. It's more fun to do, um, and it saves time. So you know. But to do this route, we actually need to do a clip here. But this clip shouldn't be that hard. Oh, I almost got the first try. Okay, second try. The way that clip works is just like the Allegro clip in the start. Also a nude strat here. Okay, didn't get it. The, the, there, someone found another... Like Scrimpy, was it? He found another way to clip in this game. Is by holding... Well, by uh, holding up and then spamming crawl. And then you can also get the clip. And for those clips that I just did, where you have like almost no time to set it up and can only try it once, it's for me, it's more consistent to try that way. Um, that's another first try clip, by the way. But yeah, as you can see, there was a lot of platforms, uh, horizontal ones, meeting diagonal ones. So you could literally just spam um, down and left and uh, eventually you'll get through. But yeah, the way a clip works is... Wait, let me just get this first. Oh, I didn't get it, damn. The way a clip works is, yeah, uh, where it meets the horizontal and the diagonal platform, you need to press down. But the frame before that needs to be... Oh, needs to be uh, right or left. Also, I did that to set up my speed storage. Um, normally I would set it up on the slippery platform before those symbols, but, um, since I failed jumping off of them, I, uh, need to set it up on the rings. And now I will use it in this level, but I cannot do a running jump until I'm on an event, so I have to slow down and do a normal jump on that splum, and then I can use that speed. You saw I got, like, a ridiculous speed, uh, jumping off that plum. It's, it's really hard to explain, but yeah. We did it, so that's all that matters. Now we hold up, uh, like hold down again to die faster. And now we're gonna clean up all the levels. We're gonna be hitting the end sign on this level as well. Now, uh, this is a cool strat where we get the cage from behind them, then use this damage boost to get uh, on that platform earlier. Because if we wouldn't be able to get that cage like I just did, 
uh, you would have to wait until that hammer. Also, I'd, I'm doing the old strat here. I'm supposed to jump uh, off the left side of the tree and then get the cage, but I don't know why I didn't do it. It doesn't save that much, though. All right, pink plant widths, and then we're moving to uh, Picture City. Picture City is usually where the run will uh, get much harder. <laughs> also, one more convenient HP right there. You can jump over that hunter, but it doesn't always work. It's pretty hard to do it. But, yeah. Also, I jumped over that P beforehand because I'm going to do a dead abuse in the next level. And uh, there is no pit I can jump in to instantly die. So, it's better to skip that P... So I only have to get hit three times to die, as opposed to getting f uh, hit five times. Alright, so, there, since there is uh, no end sign on uh, the second or the third screen, I actually have to beat this uh, level. But, I would do that anyway, because um, of how the speed fists work. Like I explained earlier, that if you hit the end sign, you reset your fist. But this time we do not want that. So right now we have uh, we picked up two speed fists: one in Gong Heights and one in Pinkland, which just now the level I just did. So I have a stage two fist right now, and that's the one I want on the third screen of this level because then we can reach a cage that is normally unreachable and unintended. So uh, there's going to be a dead abuse at the top, and then we're actually going to exit the level and re-enter to get back to that stage 2 fist. Because otherwise we wouldn't be able to reach the cage. So this cage right here, as you can see, 1 HP, very conveniently, instantly dying here. And then going out of the level and back in to get that fast fist again. Now, the tricky part is, is that I cannot die uh, anymore now until I'm on the third screen. And this screen is actually pretty hard. There is uh, quite some cycles and a quick cycle as well, right here. If I can go here fast, all right, if I jump here and then jump there, got it, nice. It didn't seem hard, but it's pretty hard. It saves two seconds. Uh, not having to wait for the pencil cycles. Okay, one more tricky part. Alright, we got it. Now we got the cage. And now it's easy from here. So yeah, you can see how dying on this screen is actually pretty easy to do. Alright, perfect screen. Now, the second screen is really easy, and then, yeah, we use the speed fists on the third screen. Gonna jump up here to uh, spawn this fairy, because we need to be small Rayman. And now, if we're fast enough, we can reach uh, this cycle right here. But it's really not that hard. There we go. Speed lock here. Ah, uh, didn't have it that. Yeah, I need to wait here as well. I had a really shitty uh, speed lock. If you have bad speed and then you uh, hold up, you have but you still have bad speed. So, all right. So, we have the fist to get this next cage, but it's still 50% chance whether we'll get it or not. Well, technically, it's not random, but... Oh, damn, that sucks, actually. It's not random, but I need to hit it on an odd frame. And since we are not robots, we cannot actually line it up. But thankfully, I got it second tried, which, which is nice. Sometimes it can take up to, like, seven tries. Because, yeah, hitting it on an odd frame, you know, it's literally 50% chance for uh, humans. Also, a pretty cool trick here. We're gonna do a data bu uh, damage boost. And then we're gonna jump on this sharpener, hover late, and then do another damage boost there. To get past that section a little bit, a little bit faster. 
And then if we time our jump, uh, it's pretty hard to time because you're going so fast. You can hit that early. And that's all the cages. Now we do need to go back because we need to be small Rayman to get past the level from here. Doing one more damage boost. The reason for that is that I don't want to take any more damage now. Um, because of the way the boss works, we can do extra hits on her, uh, which are unintended by using one HP. Now, the last one will potentially softlock the game, but um, I'm just going to go for it. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I did actually softlock in ESA Germany, but it's not going to happen now. It's not going to happen. All right, on to the boss. That was a really good Eraser Planes, by the way. Second try on the 50-50 cage, but outside of that, it was really good. Yeah, the quicker you spam this button, the, the more you do that. While waiting, you know. All right, first I have to kill these pirates. Then we're gonna hope for... Oh yeah, the only real RNG in the game is right coming up right here. These bombs are thrown with real RNG. Oh. <laughs> That's the only real RNG in this game. And he, he had good RNG, so... <laughs> Alright, so I jump on these knives. And now for the next two hits, he throws them up, all the way up. And I'm normally not able to hit her, but what I can do is jump into her and then hit her anyway, because I get pushed up high enough to hit her. Now, if we do all the damage boost hits, it sets up our HP really nicely as well, because we will be doing another dead abuse on the next level on the first screen as well. And having one HP is very quick to die. Also, this hitbox is weird. On PC, the, the PC version, it actually does hit you if you do that. Alright, so now I will uh, not softlock. And before I do, no, I won't. There we go, did it. <laughs> Didn't softlock the game. It's pretty risky if you think about it, you know, it saves 12 seconds in a marathon run, which can potentially softlock the game and, you know, you're screwed. You cannot get out of it, but it's worth it. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> I did it anyway. All right, so this is the demo. The, the, uh, oh, okay, no. All right. Yeah. Now I'm not going to die anymore because it's not quick with uh, 3 HP. Damn, that actually never happened before either. But now I can do that and fail it. All right. I didn't say anything. <laughs> All the time I gained from the softlock uh, hit is now gone. <laughs> yeah, so it was worth it to do the softlock hit anyway, because this would happen. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. Okay. So yeah, now I'm zero lives. Potentially dying on this stupid pencil here, which happened to me a lot of times already. Even if I hit it like uh, low enough, it will still not register the, the ring for some reason, but didn't get screwed over now. It's good. All right, so there is another way to preserve your momentum is by as soon as you uh, hit the ground is by doing another jump while holding up. And then you can preserve that momentum. I didn't get it. And then you can uh, get a jump all the way to this end sign, which saves like 2-3 seconds. It's really hard to do though. And it's called the easy jump. Because, you know, it's easy. Alright. Getting the speed here, even though it wasn't necessary. But normally, it's necessary. He didn't die where I did. 
Gonna set myself up here. Weird hitbox. And now there is this other place where uh, being able to do speed locking will save time. If I can set it up, there we go, nice. You only have like one or two tries to set it up quick enough and then you uh, can go all the way here without losing any time because otherwise you need to wait for cycles. And now, if you jump against the wall and you go back to the left, it resets your momentum. So if I jump against the wall, like where I just did, then I can actually make it all the way back to the left without getting hit by the spikes. Now there is this really pretty hard cycle you can get here is if you don't get hit by this anti tune. And I'll be pretty close to it. Ah, that was really close. So yeah, if you're just a little bit faster, you can make it without getting hit. This is also a really hard part casually. All the bouncy platforms and the spikes. Also, a really evil cage placement. Like, you're almost at the end sign and then the cage spawns. So everyone probably missed this cage when playing it casual. Also, now I need to do three inputs uh, right after each other. And if I mess it up, I will bounce all the way to the top of the screen. Got it. Nice. You need to press down, then straight away right, and then a helicopter. And that can be pretty hard to do. Uh, we got it. Now we need to make sure to just walk off here because otherwise uh, we will get too much speed and we will uh, hit the the pencils. One more cage here. Now we could go back to the right, but we could also go to the left here and uh, do this section again, which is faster. Oh, why, uh, why did I do that? I don't think I can make it now. Oh, God. <laughs> God. I didn't take the checkpoint either. Yeah, that's bad. I don't know why I started hovering. That was dumb. All right, now we have to do this again. All right, nice. Only in marathons. There's no reason to start hovering early there. Back to zero lives now, which is great. This is the leap of faith. Yeah! It's much faster because you, there's like this maze up here. That's the... you're supposed to go there. But if you just do a jump and a helicopter, you can skip all that. Alright, Space Mama. Pretty much the hardest level to do perfect. A lot of tricks you can do here. A lot of ways to screw it up. first screen isn't that hard. There's only uh, uh, I also have a slow fist which, uh, which is not ideal for the next screen trick. It used to be the hardest skip in the game uh, on the next screen but not anymore. There is harder stuff now. Yeah, basically, if you punch and then hover, you can punch again after the hover. But if you hover and then punch, you cannot hover anymore. So what we want to do here is punch off, then hover, and then punch again for the gauge. There we go. All right, I'll try the next trick once, but with a slow fist, it's really hard. It saves 8 seconds if you get it first try. We're basically gonna, gonna use a big tether, which is like the sparkles if you grab a ring. We're gonna make a really big tether and then try to get all the way on the top here. Yeah, and then we can get, uh, we can reach that, but with a slow fist it's much harder. So I'll only try it once. Uh, 
All right, another pretty cool trick here coming up. If we jump here and there, you can jump over that with all the speed. It's pretty hard to do as well. And then we can actually squeeze in between there because there is under the cage, the bottom here. Still in zero lives. If I die now, I will um, have a game over screen. There is still a continue though, but it will lose a lot of time. Also, here is another instance of speed locking. Right now, I got more speed than run speed by uh, going up the slippery platform. And I can use that on this sharpener here. Right there. And then I can reach this cycle first try. There we go. One life. Next screen is the boss. Another helicopter, by the way, on the clouds to uh, jump as high as I can. And now this uh, strat that saves four seconds that I don't do because it's too hard for me. You can already jump uh, on the sharpener there instead of waiting now. It's pretty hard though because if you mess it up you die and you have to do the whole screen again. Little skip there by uh, waiting and uh, grabbing that ring as soon as it spawns instead of uh, going back down and then grabbing it. All right, space mama time. You can actually get multiple hits here as well, which are unintended by uh, using our iframes. Um, basically, after the first four hits, um, if she drops down, we're gonna hit her and then we're gonna turn her around. So she's longer on the screen and that makes her iframes run out and we can get an additional hit in that is unintended. First, we wanna hope she doesn't move towards me. Okay, good. There's a chance where uh, she will actually hit us after these hits. Alright, so now we're gonna get damaged, hit her, then move to her other side so she turns around, and then her iframes run out, and then we can hit her again. Now for this hit, it doesn't work because as soon as we hit her, she will move up. So you just try to hit her as soon as we can. And then we have these spots. And then afterwards, we have to kill this washing machine. Mostly we can chill in this uh, left corner here, for the most part. Pretty hard boss casually, especially because if you die, you only have 3 HP, and doing this boss with 3 HP is pretty damn hard as a casual. Alright, so same thing again. We get the double hits, and now we have to kill the washing machine. And then the last double hit we can do, we can actually do without taking a damage. The reason for that is because the developers uh, overlooked it. She will fire two beams at us. And we can actually get a hit in um, because her, her invincibility frames run out because she fires two beams instead of one beam. And here we have to hit her every second long beam. And yeah, the washing machine can hit us there, so we have to run underneath it. Alright, so now this one is the hardest one though, in my opinion, to do. We have to hit her before she fires at us. And now we have to hit her as soon as she's fired the two beams. Got it, nice. Perfect fight. And these cutscenes, you can actually spam X to uh, get past them quicker. Onto Crystal Palace. Gonna start off with the speed lock here. To get all the way there. And then do a dead abuse here, which is faster. 
Again. Oh god, please. Again on oh, zero lives. Pretty hard trick here. Got it. Nice. At the bottom of me, there is just a pit, by the way, so if you fall down, you die. And now evil cage placement. Because uh, a cage just spawned right there. Now a new strat. It's by grabbing the ring from this side. Okay, never mind. Old thread it is. There we go. Alright. We didn't die, so it's a good screen. As long as you don't die, it's a good screen. Also, we only have 2 HP, with this, which is pretty risky for this part. And I don't think we'll have enough things to get alive before. We'll see. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab the backup life here. There's a life uh, if you jump down here. Because we are going to use another uh, another HP to get past the section a bit faster. A little bit here. Right there. Now we're gonna jump to the right to trigger a cloud. Normally you're supposed to jump on this cloud right there, ride it to the right, and then all the way back to the left, and then catch this cloud I'm on right now, but if we just jump high enough, we can trigger it quicker. Now if we're really fast, uh, I already messed it up, we could jump and catch this cycle here, but since I got that hang, it's uh... Not possible anymore. Nice drop down. Gonna wait a little bit here. Jump before the ring starts moving down because then your jump is uh, ruined. You have a really small jump there. Oh, uh, this is a bad cycle. Alright, got it. Nice. Again, doing the helicopter to get the max height jump. Here, we're actually gonna despawn this platform by doing this. If we wait long enough, the platform is gone. Saves a bit. That was Crystal Palace. Time for Ida Juice. The first screen is literally 40 seconds of waiting. So, what I like to do is this. Good for the ears. Too bad the audience can't hear it. Ah! Oh. <laughs> but there is more! <laughs> Alright. Now there is this dark level that is uh, pretty hard if you don't know where to go, but... But we have done it so many times that it's, uh, we have, you know, we have it in our minds right now. So it's not that hard anymore. There is a convenient life right here. Refill our HP. Alright, and that was the dark screen. If you punch, uh, the light will actually follow your punch so you know where you're going. Here I'm staying to the right a little bit more because of those uh, spike things. They will actually hit you here then if you move too fast. Here are damage boosts and then uh, speed lock right there on the ring. And there is uh, another clip coming up which I will probably fail. I'm only gonna try it once. 
gonna overshoot this ring to get enough speed to actually catch this ring. And then, yeah. It's annoying. You don't always get the same jump heights jumping off a ring, so you might just miss that cloud. And the clip I'm talking about is uh, right here. Didn't get it. Only tried it once. And then speed locking all the way there. And then a pretty cool way to get this next gauge if I don't mess it up. Didn't mess it up. I punched to the right and you spawn it by uh, jumping towards those things there. And since the, the fist is still at the right side of the screen, as soon as you spawn it, it uh, breaks. Looks really cool. And then here we're gonna jump and hover to uh, jump over a trigger for uh, annoying enemies. And then we're gonna jump over this spike because there's a life there for some reason. And that's that. Now one giant auto scroller on the next screen. We can also do this, make this part a little bit easier. If we move seven frames to the right there, we will instantly die because those spikes uh, instantly kill you. I like to sync with the music here. Oh, speed lock here to skip that one ring. And now we actually have to jump to the left here to spawn uh, the last gate or the second last gauge. Now uh, there is two pretty hard optimizations on the screen. I'll try to do them. Potentially I will die. First I'm gonna do this easy. Right, now you can actually get to the right way quicker than, uh, than you're supposed to like that. Another cool trick to get the cage. Yeah, I won't do this one. I failed this one horribly last time. You can uh, get a damage boost on the hammer and then uh, use those invincibility frames to already jump to the next ball, but I decided to uh, take it safe. All right, two more levels. Scops right now. Pretty cool trick here if we can get it. Gonna overshoot this ring and then speed lock. Ah, oh, you can get all the way to this platform right here. Another speed lock right there. Moving a bit more to the right so then uh, the cage here triggers. And then I'm gonna use invincibility frames to uh, to jump up here. And then gonna try and grab this ring as fast as possible to right reach that cycle right there. Gonna wait a little bit to jump on this one. And then the cycles are pretty annoying usually, but got it, nice. 
All right, not bad. Time for scops. Oh, another actually RNG moment here. It's RNG which one he knocks off. So there is two real RNG moments in this game. Yeah, I lied. I know, I lied. All right, so what we can do now is we can respawn this left platform by going all the way to the right here. It respawns and now it doesn't drop down anymore and now the fight is really easy. Now, another thing is as soon as he hits the uh, the edge, you can actually hit him to make him move to the right faster. Otherwise, he stands there for like a second. Like, you don't do any damage. He just, for some reason, moves to the fight faster. Or moves, moves to the right faster as soon as you hit him. This is not random. This is always the same. Right. Now we're gonna hit an ensign and then actually we'll be able to do damage to him on the next screen by redirecting his punches by punching ourselves. The punch will follow our punch. Like that. All right, it's almost time for the final level. Which starts off uh, with Rayman being on a frying pan, sliding off uh, chocolate, you know, uh, slides. Pretty funny. In general, I think the, the art style is really cool in this game. All right, that scops down. One more level to go. And spam X here again to uh, skip this cutscene a little bit quicker. Now, since we have all the cages, this level unlocks. If we don't have all the cages, you cannot go here. Yeah, Clown Skip is uh, on the third screen. It uh, can be pretty annoying. First, we need to get past this section though. Oh, uh, this might be bad. Ah, it's fine. Just a little bit slower. All right. Now there is Dark Rayman chasing us and he does exactly the same uh, as us. If he catches on to us, he will instantly kill us, though. But since I have 2 HP, I'm gonna take it a little bit safe and get this life here. Because on the next screen, there is a thing called Clown Skip, and uh, you need to use 1 HP. Well, you don't need to, but it's easier um, to use a damage to try and get it. it saves 10 seconds. Also, you see these clouds moving up and down a little bit. If you jump and you are really unlucky and the cloud is all the way at the top when you jump, you don't actually make the jump. But we didn't get that unlucky. All right, time for clown skip. Let's see. Give me a first try. Also, left is right and right is left right now. I'm holding left on the controller to go right. Uh. Hey! <laughs> Alright. Second try clown skip. I'll take that. Gonna jump here and then the cloud and then jump again. Get past this section. Ooh, I got the hang list. Nice. There's a lot of chances to actually hang on those small platforms. But you can do it without it. Which I just did. Alright, now the game moves automatically. So all I have to do is do the jump in boots. Alright. 
now I'm gonna take the bottom path because it's faster. And now on to the final boss. Yeah, there is this thing uh, you can do at the final phase. It's called uh, double hits. Uh, basically, if you hit the boss and you hit him 58 frames, I think it was, uh, 58 frames after that, exactly 58 frames, you can hit him again. And that saves like three seconds per hit, roughly. Because if you miss it, he will, the boss will jump up all the way and then go down and you can hit him again. But do it without him jumping. I think the best someone has ever done in RTA is six hits in a row. M me, myself, I've done five hits in a row like three times, I think. I haven't done, been able to do six. Looks like it's gonna be a 121. It's not too bad. All right, you can get four hits on this guy, but it's really hard. So I'll settle with three. Nice. And then these you can just stun lock as long as you just keep hitting the left one. The right one doesn't hit you. All right, now for the double hits. Oh. Hey, we got one. You ready for time on the final hit? Yeah. One twenty one forty eight. That's pretty good. I expected worse, to be honest. <laughs> like, all the stuff that's happened in the start of the run was just so bad, but still still got a pretty good run. Pretty happy with it. Uh, up, up next is Rayman 3 by uh, Nandi. Thank you guys for watching, and have fun with the rest of the marathon. Thank you, Vex, Sarah. That was a good one. Uh, 